mchana wa leo tunasimama kwa niaba ya Kenya mzima na kaunti yetu ya Nakuru ya kwamba ile laana ilitangazwa ya kwamba tutaumia tuta tumeivunja sasa na tumapokea sasa baraka zitokazo katika kiti cha enzi katika jina la baba na la mwana na la roho mtakatifu na zote tuseme amen amen now can you allow me now to pray that when we leave this place none of us will leave this place empty that we will be blessed when we come in and when we, we will be blessed when we go out and lord we thank you because you have heard us in the name of the father and the son and the holy spirit amen, amen. and may the grace this very special occasion of our county prayer breakfast to celebrate our almighty god's blessings to all of us as uh, the clergy leaders and residents of nakuru county here at the sarova woodlands or its extension my acknowledgement first to our religious leaders drawn from different churches for planning and working tirelessly to ensure that this momentous occasion is indeed a success. I'm truly humbled by your work and dedication to serve. I also thank elected leaders and county officials for congregating here for the prayer breakfast. Your gesture of unity and comradeship profoundly touches me. We congregate here today for Thanksgiving to acknowledge the blessings the favors, the mercies, the kind acts, good deeds, and generally the positive things God has and continues to grant us in our lives. Thanksgiving is to glorify God as an act of worship, giving thanks for all things as part of God's providence. As for, the, as for those of us in leadership, the Holy Scriptures require us to serve others with selflessness and sacrifice. Um, that leadership is not about position, privilege, or power. It is a calling to serve. On this Thanksgiving occasion, I'm, humble in, I'm humbled enough to assure all of you gathered here that I'm committed to serving the people of the great county of Nakuru. Nakuru County is an agricultural area blessed with a hinterland of rich, arable soils. To entrench and enhance agriculture as the key driver of income generation, agro-industry, food, security, and employment, we are banking on innovation technology and partnerships to propel the farming of pyrethrum, of potatoes, macadamia, avocado, as uh, commercial, to commercial productive ventures. We have and are still distributing certified seedlings to farmers across the county for better yields, as well as the ongoing employment of extension officers to guide our farmers on better farming methods as we have taken the first steps up the value addition chain. Last week, we undertook the groundbreaking ceremony for the construction of a multi-billion pyrethrum processing plant <coughs> by Kentegra Limited in Naivasha. In the next month, with God's blessings, we will be breaking ground for the construction of a county aggregation and industrial park at Ijaton Agro City in Joro. With these two projects underway, we will be placing Nakuru County on the path of agro industry and thereby adding premium value to farm produce. I must also report that Nakuru County is expecting a bumper maize harvest. With what I see when I tour parts of the county arising from the subsidized fertilizer program by the national government. It is significant to note here that we distributed over 300,000 bags of fertilizer. With Nakuru as the only county in the country that implemented the last mile in delivering fertilizer to farmers. Hand in hand with laying the ground for the value chain to our main cash crops, we are, part, we are at the formative stages of establishing an industrial base as the Ijaton uh, Agro City Park, the Naivasha Special Economic Zone, and the Kenjen Energy Park that was mentioned here earlier. 
So we are working closely with the national government to raise funds to start off these industrial parks. And I can report that we are at the tail end of the plans. As a county, we are still enacting policies that give us a competitive edge on attracting, and thank you very much, on attracting and retaining local and international investors. So we are really, truly thankful for these investors. So we are about to roll out a new licensing regime that provides for one license to open a business with approval in 48 hours. We have expedited uh, applications of change of user for land and rezoned some areas for commercial use to attract investors. We have also set aside land for commercial investments in areas such as Naivasha and Salga. These measures, coupled with the continuous upgrading of roads, the opening of new ones in rural areas, are meant to give us an edge in industrial and business attractiveness. The health of a county is a key factor for the development and welfare of its people. Since assuming office, we have distributed medicines and non-pharmaceuticals worth more than 400 million to our low volume level four hospitals, to the dispensaries and health facilities, ending the perennial problem, uh, towards ending the perennial problem of drug shortages in public hospitals. In partnership with the national government, we are equipping the trauma center at the Nakuru Teaching and Referral Hospital and the new building at the Naivasha District Hospital. We have set aside more than 112 million in this year's budget to equip our patient wing in at least five level four hospitals. We are in the process of commissioning more than 34 level two hospitals at the same time as we expand our patient departments as at a low level hospital such as Subukia and Olenguroni. And at that point, I also want to point out the great help that we are getting from Apostle Kimani at the Bahati uh, District Hospital. Thank you very much. We really, truly appreciate that. And uh, we look forward to getting that done so that uh, the people around that area can use it. And to cement our healthcare sector, we have signed an agreement with the United States Agency for International Development to strengthen the foundation of our health systems and another international agency called ThinkWell to find innovative ways to finance our health facilities and delivery of services. Still, we are undertaking reforms in the health sector with a view to improve revenue collection, train our staff, onboard technology, and automate health systems to reduce theft, and especially of medicines. The end game is to have a health system that delivers quality, affordable, and timely health care in place. Ladies and gentlemen, education is the best tool to fight and overcome poverty in our county. Even though the Constitution of Kenya 2010 in the fourth schedule restricts counties to early childhood education, the ECDs, we chose to disperse 177.8 million as bursaries to 48,000 needy students drawn from universities, colleges, vocational training centers, secondary schools, and special schools. And with the help of the MCAs, we have come together in this coming financial year, we are increasing the bursaries from 177 to over 300 million for the new students. So we take the decisions because we believe that with education, these students will be able to change their lives and those of their families. In this financial year, so we are in intending to increase, as I've said, and as a county mandate, we are constructing, equipping, and operating public ECD schools, which we have approximately 60,000 learners in our ECDs and a total of 1,003 public ECDs, not to mention the 1,000 private ECDs across the county, with an estimated total of the private ones at 59,000. So as I pledged during my campaigns, I'm in the final stages of launching the school feeding program for all ECD pupils in public schools to increase and retain in the enrollment. To augment our efforts, we are bringing on board a team from Israel, and we have the ambassador of Israel visiting us this coming Monday and with which uh, with their help uh, they are going to help us to improve the dietary content of our school feeding program and we are also hiring additional ECD teachers because we have had shortages and parents have been having to pay for these teachers. 
So we have also prioritized development of housing stocks in the city and its urban areas with the current target standing at 10,000 housing units. Nakuru currently has a total of 5,469 housing units underscoring the need to build more houses. We are finalizing the initial 10,000 units rollout plan and I'm happy to report that a total of 605 units are under construction at Bondeni Affordable Housing Projects. We are also finalizing a strategy for mapping all available public land across all the 11 sub-counties in line with an ambitious and high practical plan of housing Kenyans and also in support of the national government and the president's very passionate big agenda. We are planning to launch a housing regulation strategy to take stock of housing uh, typology. I believe that every resident of Nakuru County should enjoy good housing and sanitation and be able to live in dignity. Further, we have and continue to sink boreholes in all 11 sub-counties in our mission to ensure Nakuru residents have access to safe and clean water for domestic use and irrigation. We have also set aside funds to increase the number of uh, digital centers, but before getting there, I also wish to report that uh, we are also getting very close to the beginning, uh, very close to getting the Itare Dam constructed. And I spoke with the PS of Water yesterday and beginning hopefully in October, we should get that work begun. That will be a big game changer. I know my MP Irene talked about water. Water is really a big deal in this county and that is why it was my number one agenda as I ran for elections. We have also set aside funds to increase the number of digital centers from the current six to ensure that each constituency has a digital center to give our children a competitive edge in ICT. In this regard, allow me to report that we are soon embarking on the digitization of services provided by the county to avoid residents having to travel long distances to receive services. As I said initially, our administration is committed to transforming Nakuru County through service provision and project implementation. In conclusion, I'm alive to the fact that we would not be standing here were it not for God's blessings. Uh, God has granted me and my team uh, the, the opportunity to serve the people of Nakuru County and with humility we pledge to serve. For our religious leaders, I will always seek your prayers and guidance as I, as I navigate the many challenges in this leadership journey. And I want to thank you because you have worked with us before this, before we got into office and now that we have been in office and as we said, whatever is born in prayer must be maintained in prayer. So we thank you for holding our hands, for praying for us, but also for agreeing to become part of our committees on the ground, in the hospitals, in the different committees, so that you can help us make sure that things are going well. I wish all of you God's grace and blessings, and for all of us leaders from Apostle Kimani's preaching, I pray that as we live here, as we continue to serve God's people, that we not become curses to his people, but instead become blessings to his people, and that we all understand, uh, we, we all work hard towards breaking this uh, leadership uh, curse. And uh, we must deliver because leadership is sacred as we were well told this morning. So thank you all so much. Thank you. I can't thank you enough 